Country weather is costing us over £1 billion a day. How many snow plows could you buy with that money? The answer is 10,000. Uh, it really is snow joke, as the Daily Star makes abundantly clear this morning. Why can't we handle winter anymore? Because despite weeks of warnings that snow and ice were on their way, it's total chaos out there. Airports, Gatwick Airport closed, Edinburgh, railways, roads, schools shut, shops running out of food, and millions of people not at work. Millions more than the government had in mind, anyway. Does this all sound a bit familiar? It should do, because the exact same thing happened less than a year ago. Now, while the kids are having the time of their life, the economy is going down the drain. More than a billion pounds a day it's costing to have one in ten of the country's workforce stuck at home. But why are things so bad? Why? Other countries are literally laughing at us. I've been mocked by my Polish plumber pals, who literally look down their noses at our gross national incompetence. Now, I don't think it's fair to compare our dismal failings to Sweden's ice-cool efficacy. It's miserable and cold there 365 days a year, and that's just in their hearts. Oh. I wonder... <laughs> I've been to Sweden. I wonder if BBC London weatherman Peter Cockcroft hit the nail on the head when he said last night that this year's harsh winter isn't the problem, it's the decade-plus of unusually warm winters that have done for us. Why? Well, because in little more than ten years, we've forgotten what a proper freeze is like. And I've been thinking about this ever since he said it. I think he may be right. It never used to be like this, did it, Dave? I no, mean... it didn't. And we used to have winters exactly like this. We'd yeah. just been through this kind of unusually mild decade or something. Uh, and that, no, when I was a kid, it was snowy like this. And... and you got to school? Well, yeah, although I just climbed over the fence and I was in school. Oh, because so that was next door. Yeah, right. okay. yeah, it was easy. So schools didn't close? Well, no, they, they did occasionally. No, they did close okay. um, occasionally. Mine never did. No, really? And mine never shut. But it was, it was because the teachers couldn't get in. That was why mm. they closed. Because yeah. most of the kids live within but that walking was in the distance of the school. But th in this day and age, nobody seems to make it in. Although Jodie can make it down from Rossendale. <laughs> well, yeah, I nearly forgot myself there, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And yet there are people that live 25 miles away from the studio who can't make it in. I don't mm. understand. I, I don't get it either. So it what, wait, what's gone wrong? Uh, I think it is. People have got... Um, I think there's a, a cost thing that goes on. I think at some point it got so mild that to actually have the infrastructure to deal with it wasn't worth it for two days of, of inconvenience in the year. So you think, oh, we might as well just take it on chin for a couple of days, and now it's growing and growing and growing. It's going to be two weeks, three weeks, four weeks a year, and we're going to have to put some money into it and, and build that infrastructure back up. Okay. I don't have any truck with this. It costs $1.2 billion a, a day. I don't understand that. People do go to work, and they catch up with but, where they but were. But the in, money comes back in. I, don't believe I, mean, I, I run a business, and people have been cancelling. People haven't been coming because they say they can't get in. That's money that's lost yeah. out of my business that so will not come back. So, no, there are people... There are shops. It should be people peak shopping season where people are ordering online, for example, and not going to the shops. So, no, for small businesses, I think it's been actually think... catastrophic. But well, that's not money left out of the economy, cos that money is still going somewhere. Well, presumably... I'm... Yeah, if they're ordering have... online instead of going to the shop. I'm not saying... Yes. I, yeah. I would rather we, they went we... to the shops than, than yes. order online, but they, the money yes. is not losing okay. from loss yes. from our economy. Come on, Larry, then. Um, I, I, every morning, I'm like, please let them keep the school open. Please <laughs> let them keep the school open. <laughs> and, you know, Justine, the makeup artist, has got her kid here today and everything. And for, for parents, it's a nightmare. Um, what's interesting to me is that I've just moved my kids' school. At the last school, um, they used to, as soon as there was, like, one little bit of snow, they would cone off the playground now because health and safety, you see. That's one of the big issues, health and safety. Oh, we can't have the kids in school because of health and safety. I'm very happy to report at the new school, they're actually allowed to play snowballs. I'm amazed. Wow. Um, and the, the argument something with schools has always been all pet that teachers can't get in. You know, I kind of think again, if you run your own business, you get there. You absolutely am I, get am there. Am I? Am I a kind of neo-Nazi and thinking if you live? Uh, I walk. I could happily walk five miles to work. If I had to, I could walk ten miles to work. Three miles, four miles an hour. It might take me three hours. I get there late. But you still make the effort. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. Jodie, what the problem is, I don't understand how mm. you can do 200-plus miles and make it here, and yet one in ten of the workforce can't. That's it, yeah, well, it, I mean, it's about making a choice, isn't it? Do you want to make the effort? Well, so, so, what, what's so the we choices? don't. The choice is to, to sit back and, oh, it's snowing, so we'll scare off, or, quick, or should we make the effort? I'd say very quickly that, that you know, when you move out of the big cities, there are parts of the country where the roads oh, are completely uh, ungraded and you can't drive your car anywhere. No, but you so can you bicycle. Well, where, where, where we are, as I explained earlier, to get onto the show, I've had to wait for a foot of snow to just to get on the train, get a taxi to the train station, whatever. People where I live, a lot of people, one in, probably one in ten have four-wheel drives and are quite happy to get <laughs> these four-wheel drives out in summer 
and go up to the school <laughs> when it's sun shining and all that. But yeah, yeah. they don't want to bump the 40 grand four wheel drive because it's snowing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so the only thing. <laughs> There is also, it's not necessarily the individual's fault, because there are, I think, the loads of trains on South East and the, today going into Waterloo yeah. were cancelled. So, yeah. so yeah. there's loads of people who have no option. You know, they've got a, a 50 mile journey to work and the train's cancelled. And I have to say, for the teachers, yeah, for right. the teachers who are at the, the children's schools, the teachers there, who can't make it into work, because they, we live out in the countryside and some of them live on farms or some of them live up big steep hills in like, rural areas so, because we're in the so countryside. So you make your way in in day one and then you stay over at the school, yeah? <laughs> yeah. or you stay with a friend who lives nearby and you cope. I don't... I've seen film on news reports of people that are camping at work and so on and so forth. I'd... Well, I think, you know, some of them might be parents and that might not be an option. You have to, you know, allow yeah, for everyone yeah. else's circumstances. Yeah. And if your school has been cancelled and so your kids have been sent home and someone has to be at home to look after them, yeah. then you can say, but you just go in and you cope. Well, some people are going, well, you know what, I'm just staying in and I'm coping. <laughs> that is what they're doing. They're coping. Yeah. <laughs> OK. So, I still don't think yeah. we used to be like this and I worry about what it is that's turned us like this, soft or lazy or whatever. Sorry, open to you. Kirsty, what do people okay, say? OK, first we have Michael on line four. Michael, good morning. Hi there, you all right? I'm, I'm good, you? Yeah, I'm not bad, thank you. Are you snowbound or uh, just lazy? Uh, I, I'm snowbound, but I wouldn't like to consider myself lazy. <laughs> OK. Uh, what's gone wrong? Cos it... Would you say it's never been... You know, it's not... It didn't used to be like this? Well, I mean, I've, uh, what I've run for, I've got a family in Canada. I visit there quite regularly. Um, and during the winter, you know, they're four to five times worse than this. Yeah. Uh, maybe more, you know. But it goes on all the time. So, I mean, the people I know in Canada have snowmobiles. It's very unlikely that somebody who lives in Camden is going to buy a snowmobile because, <laughs> quite frankly, one, it'll get nicked, and two, it doesn't snow that often. Although, if there is a part of London where someone's going to buy a snowmobile, <laughs> it would be Camden. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, just to be different. Yeah. Um, so, well, you think... But the government's at fault? Well, yeah, I mean, I was watching a video on YouTube. It was the, the Conservatives channel. Uh, David Cameron was talking about the situation. Uh, he basically said that um, it's a killer. Snow's a killer. It costs so many lives every year. And uh, I, I just think it's a bit ridiculous. You know, we're not talking about um, murder or anything. We're talking about snow. And I just, uh, you know, going back to Canada... I just feel that we can easily be more prepared and there's no reason to make it into a bigger situation than it is. OK, OK. I mean, um, some of you were talking here during the break about, oh, the trouble is people get in their cars and they're unprepared. They haven't got a bit of old carpet in the car. And I thought, well, I haven't. I haven't got any old carpet. They haven't got a shovel in the car. I thought, I haven't got that either. So I, I guess I'm as guilty as everybody else. I just left the car and walk. Um, thank you for the call. Let's have another. OK, we'll take Dave next on line two. Dave, good morning. Good morning. So why aren't we coping, Dave? Well, I used to work for British Rail, and I, and I actually feel very sorry for the people in the south of England at the moment that the trains aren't running. Yeah. We used to have snow ploughs, which every year we had to go out and test every September. We had much fun going through the stations, looking at the passengers watching us testing these snow ploughs when there was no snow plough. But in the mid-1990s then, British Rail, during the run-up to privatisation, decided where can we make the cuts. So... That was one of the first things they did. They scrapped all the snow plows in the south of England. Wow. Wow. And then nobody buys any more because they get no, more... No, no. In fact, it's, one of the ironic things is, is uh, a couple of the preserved railways, you know, the steam railways which uh, the tourists run on, have actually bought them. Uh, one in case is the North Yorkshire Moors Railway, which actually, I believe, is still running. <laughs> <laughs> now, I did a little bit of research, Dave, uh, before we came on air about the cost of snow plows, just in case I fancy buying one. No, uh, <laughs> I, I just want to know what the, what the cheapest option would be. And you can buy an attachment for a tractor for £459 that enables the tractor to become a snowplough. And I'm thinking <coughs> that there must be tens of thousands of tractors scattered around the farmlands of this country. <laughs> Can't there be some system of equipping them through the council, through our council taxes or through national taxes? We have communal snowplough attachments. And, and then putting money back into farming as well. And put some money back into farming. Well, the problem with the, the, like, the privatisation of the railways, where you turn them all into profit enterprises, yeah. is that they're no longer concerned. If they lose... If it's cheaper for them to lose two days of business because of snow than to have a snowplough, then that's what they'll do. Risk Whereas assessment. it used to be, is it better for the country yeah. to have a transport system? The losses to the country... It's nothing to do with the railway companies don't have to worry about that, but the country does. 
and it used to be the country's railway. So we're, but we're never going to change from that. Of course we're not. So it's going to be like this all the time. Take the genie out of the bottle, it's too late now. You can't nationalise the railways, okay. can you? I love Dave's point about the uh, Yorkshire Railways open. I think mean, that's fantastic. Thank you for the call. Yorkshire. We have Emma next on line five. Emma, good morning. Good morning. What's going hey, on? Um, my thoughts are that the Southerners need to wind the necks in because come up here, up to Newcastle, then you'll see what's next. <laughs> 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 I did like the past week, uh, like a week longer than you Southerners. So yeah. wind your necks in. Right. And it would also help if the snow plows plow the snow and not my car. <laughs> OK, and uh, why don't you buy yourself a coat, Emma? Oh, I've got a coat, but... <laughs> You've got a coat? Um, I now have no car, thanks to the snowplow. What, the snowplow drove into your car? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's the way to go, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's so weird, of course. There is a ridiculousness about the way the media cover it, cos... The, the, they once, can't wait. Snow all over the rest of the country, not worried. Hits London, <laughs> suddenly every news channel starts talking about the snow. I know. And every news channel is saying, send us your pictures, send us your photos, we want your pictures of the snow. And then yesterday, on the BBC News website, there was a thing saying, why are we all getting so excited about the snow? <laughs> it's because you keep asking us for your photos! <laughs> <laughs> I desperately tried to resist doing something on the snow, cos I just thought, oh, it's just so obvious. But in actual fact, it's become... The country really has ground to a halt. Yeah, yeah. Emma, bless you for the call and the advice. Uh, let's have another. Yeah, we have Jack next on line three. Jack, good morning. Good, good morning, Matthew. Good morning. So... Um, I actually used to work on a dairy farm in the winter of 1981. Right. And I got to work on a motorcycle. I'd only owned it a few weeks and had to ride to work in the snow. My mother, to be honest with you, she was actually worried about me crashing the bike in case I broke the flask that I was carrying. <laughs> <laughs> she is an NHS nurse, by the way. Okay. Um, but the thing is, I think quite realistically, people have gone... It's a combination, quite honestly. The majority of British people, as young Mr Latham has said, have gone soft and lazy. That's what's wrong with Britain. Yeah. Everyone yeah. seems to be going yeah. softer and lazier. And as you say about Polish people, come here, and they make derisory jokes about us, and we are fast becoming the laughing stock of Northern Europe. And, you know, it's, it's just the way the British people have gone. What are we going to do about it, Jack? T to be quite honest with you, back to national service. <laughs> Seriously, back to national service yeah, yeah, yeah. and harden up younger people again. <laughs> They're far too soft. It's fantastic, isn't it? We think of all these things. What are we going to do with this? Millions and millions of unemployed people, and you think, give them shovels. The thing is, uh, you know, there was a time when there was a, a generation older than Jack calling Jack lazy. That actually, that's just what people of a certain generation do. At some point, every generation thinks that the, the new lot are uh, yeah. a bunch of lazy. Work shy. But there is there is an element. I think you were saying this before we came on air that there's a generation of drivers out there. Uh, every driver in their 20s that's never driven in snow, therefore wouldn't have any yeah. experience or preparation or notion because of what Peter Cockcroft said and the fact that we've had so Don't many miles... snow chains anymore. I seem no. to remember with my... Have you ever tried to you fit can. snow chains? I know, well, The I Rubik's Cube is simpler. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> it's impossible. You have to it's have impossible. The, the chain in the first place, but that's nothing that's not in the boot of your car, is no, it? No, it isn't. <laughs> Thanks. Well, my car is parked up. I can't use it. It's just pointless. I got stuck last year. I've a, the road I live in, used to live in, due to the flood. I haven't been there for a while now. It's about thirty. Oh. It's about thirty <laughs> yards long, and I can get my car out of it for a week. There's one gritting thing in Camden, and that was empty before the snow hit the ground. Oh. I love They're the saying fact. go and buy some grip. I haven't got a car to carry it home. <laughs> Let's go to a break. I've had enough of this <laughs> descent. <laughs> After which, uh, we'll find out how far you'd go to get some lost or stolen items uh, back to you again. Would you chase the thief? If you did, what if you caught them? That would be my concern. 0207 173 555. That's the number for your stories. And I promise you, you're going to hear a cracking tale from one of the people on the panel. Uh, all you've got to do is hang on until after this break. We're back in three. <laughs> Mobile phones are reported stolen every hour in the UK. 28, 128 or 228. Find out after the break.